who actually use their blog to deploy that to actual <laughs> users. And with that point, it, Denise Cardone doing the um, Samba stories. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So uh, our talk will be stories about Battlefound and one. Uh, we are not Samba team developers, we are integrators. So Tranquility, uh, we have a small con uh, contracting company, so 15 person in uh, France since uh, 2002, mostly in uh, free software, but in uh, the real world we have a free software and proprietary one, Windows, and so we have to do with it. And uh, Samba is a piece of it that plug everything together. So we have uh, so this is some expertise and uh, WAPT expertise that is a software deployment configuration software that we have been developing for the last six years. And I mention it here because it's one part of uh, our daily job with Samba when we are doing migration. It is also very important to control the desktops and the configuration of desktops. Because when you change big stuff on the server side, often you have to change a few things on the desktop side. So we have both uh, large clients and smaller ones. The large one is more interesting from a, uh, from a technical point of view, and the small one helps us to keep our feet on the floor and <laughs> to know how what happens in the in the day-to-day -day world. So Samba and Tranquility is a long love story. It uh, started in 2004 with a Samba NT4 deployment, and uh, actually in France it was quite quite huge Samba deployment. And uh, in uh, 2011, we started a Samba AD deployment. Like I said before, it's, uh, you can, uh, as long as you knew what to do and not to do, it was already ready for small, small scale production. And uh, actually, we are supposed to be the leading Samba integrator in France, at least it's Google French, Google France, let's say it. <laughs> we are above, the, with Samba4 keyword, we are above Samba.org site. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we had, uh, up to now, we have, doing, uh, we have been doing mostly Samba NT4 to Samba AD deployment. But now, with uh, more and more people uh, looking at Samba and uh, the opportunity of uh, this software, we also do more and more Microsoft Active Directory to Samba AD deployment. So that's a very good thing. And uh, often when we do migration, there is a big part of it is also restructuring. So there is some domain merge, renaming, and fixing up stuff because most of the domains are something like 5, 10, or 15 years old. And uh, they have some, uh, some stuff to, to clean up. So Samba actually is very popular in France. Perhaps to some other people in other countries, it might seem uh, strange. And in France, I don't know why. Perhaps it's a free as a beer syndrome. And uh, we like free stuff in France, free as in speech syndrome, or perhaps just only the general de Gaulle syndrome. We don't like the American stuff, and <laughs> we want the French one. <laughs> <laughs> so you might say, oh my god, there are still NT4 domains running out there. Yeah, a lot of them in France. And actually, it's, it's moving very fast to Active Directory now. But uh, it has been very strong. And, uh, and Samba NT4 actually is not like a Microsoft NT4 domain, which really sucks now. Uh, with Samba, you still have the possibility to have LDAP, multi-master replication, uh, SMB2, SMB3 protocol, signing, encryption, and every uh, modern uh, stuff on your NT4 domain. You just don't have Kerberos. <laughs> but most of, the, most of the other stuff, you, you could have it. But it's dying. Microsoft won't hit to die. It's like... A, uh, NTLM is bad, NetBIOS is bad. You have to get rid of that. And uh, on Windows 10, the last version, you, are, you have to force SMB1 on the domain controller for it to authenticate Windows 10 computers. So it just... When I cry, so if... Uh, it's a big, uh, a big issue for, for many, many companies. They know uh, it's, it makes the switch to Active Directory faster. Uh, when I sp by the way, when I speak about Active Directory, it's uh, Samba or Microsoft Active Directory, one or the other. Actually, Active Directory is a set of technology put together to provide authentication and identity management. Uh, Samba is a Samba implementation, Microsoft is a Microsoft implementation. So I will use Active Directory as, a, as just a technology around that. So we need to switch to ID and fast because NT4 is dying. Uh, 
so actually, uh, when we are dealing with the real world deployment, we can see that there is a lot of creativity among a uh, system administrator. Like uh, in Samba 3, uh, you had the possibility to tweak about every part of it. So people, people did, did it, did it tweak every part of it, single it part, like ID mapping and uh, the type of uh, database, the underscore in uh, names. You could have also dot in NetBIOS name. <laughs> That make it very, very helpful currently, and uh, actually, it's, uh, it, it make it quite hard. And, uh, and you can also have a non very friendly environment. Actually, when you've got Samba to Microsoft, uh, Samba to uh, Active Directory migration and default to Active Directory, often people uh, also have many other stuff on their network, like uh, hold Red Hat 3. No, we cannot upgrade it. The software just run on that one, on uh, Solaris 8. And uh, I even had a, a NIS, uh, NIS authentication to try to, to fix when we were upgrading. But it's always possible to set up a proper test environment. And so you know that everything will be fine when you will do the migration. Because the, the DC is the heart of the network. It's a DNS, uh, NTP, and uh, well, wins. Yeah, we try to kill it too. <laughs> it's, but in many networks, if you just stop wins, wins from one day to another, many things just break out because DNS are not properly set up. But <laughs> that's one good part of our job is to try to clean up the everything when we do it. And uh, when you are made, doing your migration, you can find strange addressing plan like uh, on a one, once we had a, a site, it was 2.0.0-8, <coughs> their domain. And on the second site was 1.0.0.0-8. So uh, we don't want to, to use that for our, our migration. But after the same year, hey, the ERP, we don't, the nobody, there is nobody left in the company that know how to change the IP address. <laughs> so we kept this IP address even during the migration. So. You have, to, you have to deal with many strange things, many strange, uh, like IP address 200, 200, dot zero, zero, 16, slash 16. I don't know what they got that one. Uh, the other one, 192.9, nine, they started right, but they finished <laughs> wrong. And uh, we still have many people who have uh, public IPv IPv4 on their private network, and actually it's netted. <laughs> <laughs> on the internet. So we can find many d strange things. Yeah, it's dot netbios.name. And, uh, and you can also, we had also a few migration from Microsoft with Microsoft Active Directory without dot in the Kerberos domain name. Mm. It can be done too. It's awful. <laughs> and uh, one thing that uh, we if you think about security, we often think about the w internet, the web, the peripheric. Uh, peripheral uh, protection. But actually, for us, the Wild West is inside with uh, AIX AS400 AS and uh, NT4 Solaris and uh, all the IoT and uh, command and control machine. And I recently even had a VAX. <laughs> <laughs> DMS rule. <laughs> <laughs> for the first time for me. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's like a uh, they had their software in the 80s after the company that does this software went tits up and so they, they took over the development and after their, their VAX uh, computer went tits up, they went virtualizing and then the virtualizing company went tits up and so they took over the virtualization software <laughs> and then in 2018 they are still using it. Um, so. But at the heart of all this thing is the identity access management, authentication, and for that, in order to tame your network and to tame your windows, it's nothing better than having a Linux, and uh, Samba is great for that. Uh, some people may ask, uh, wh how, can you, how much does it scale? Currently, with uh, 4.7, uh, you can have no problem. You're having uh, like 10,000 users and uh, 5,000 desktops and uh, having uh, many DCs with a new KCC is a software that does the mapping between, replication mapping between the different DCs. You can have up to, uh, we have a client with uh, 80 DCs on his network. So yes, it can scale. And uh, more than 100 sites. <coughs> so, and uh, another thing is that uh, RODC, it's a read-only domain controller, is another technology from Microsoft, it's been, has been 
almost, uh, not completely, but uh, most of it have been implemented in Samba, which will, be, uh, which will make it possible to go very beyond those limits. <coughs> uh, another thing is that uh, in France, uh, we have been working with quite large network, and uh, so there are other people with larger one who came up to us and are asking for good Samba run on my network, like something like 120, uh, 120,000 users. And uh, well, we went to Andrew, and <laughs> I think it might be hard. <laughs> and, uh, and so currently, we had uh, some financing to, to try to push uh, Samba beyond uh, those 100, 200,000 users. So it's really getting uh, forward and getting very big. So for, for this type of scale, it should be for Samba 4.9 in, uh, in uh, September in uh, September or October. I don't know what would be, at least for 4.9. <coughs> uh, so we have uh, some bad scale in uh, central administration of uh, ministries, French ministries, in uh, regional administration, uh, in the city administration, and even in defense, French military. We have it in industry, school, and of course school universities. At, uh, and, um, among those ones, there are still many on Samba 3, waiting to switch to Samba 4, and some of them is because of the scale factor. So there are really huge network to be migrated. So about some of our fond memories. It's like uh, three years ago, I, still, uh, I went to a client. He was still running MT4 on a 13-year-old machine. <laughs> well, he, when you open it, it was just a big mess inside, but <laughs> it was still running. And uh, another, uh, and like they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But well, nobody uh, anymore knew what to do with it. So it was good to migrate to Samba AD. Another at the French uh, research lab uh, for space exploration. For their, w when they think about a project over there, when they send something in space, it's for like, something like 15 years, 20 years. So whole technology is everywhere. So I even found, yes, Solaris 8, NIS, and a floppy drive, eight, eight inches floppy drive. I think I never saw that in my life. <laughs> Actually, they didn't find what, which, which computer was it to be <laughs> for, for use, <laughs> but well. And researchers are like artists, they try to, they have very high level of uh, creativity. Another migration, we went to the client and uh, the computer failed just when we were doing the migration. You open, you say, oh, no problem, we'll take the hard drive and uh, just remake the red, the, the red and stuff like that. And you open it and, hey, it's Pata drive. <laughs> that was an old one. <laughs> and so you just don't have anything to plug it in. So you try to find a, a, a small IT business in, a, in the area to just plug your drive in order to finish your migration. Another, another one we had in, uh, recently in the Caribbean, it's like uh, when there was the hurricane uh, season over there, it was just uh, the client say, hurry up for your migration before they cut the electricity. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it gets very, very, very busy. And, uh, and uh, one thing on, on migration that uh, it's very important to do is to have a very good inventory of both your server and your desktops. Like a client telling me after the next morning after migration, oh yeah, we are missing 200 uh, desktop for the migration. See, we didn't found them. <laughs> and actually, uh, our inventory was right, and, uh, and theirs was wrong. But it was something like 10% uh, discrepancies. <laughs> but when you have large thousands of desktop, well, there's just a few ones that are left, lost. And uh, don't forget the DHCP, like you, when you've got 1,000 users and uh, during the night you forget the DHCP to, to migrate the DHCP, it's, a very, it's uh, not a good, good morning. <laughs> so uh, uh, an example I took two years ago at, first at uh, Samba XP, and uh, that was quite a nice one. It's like um, okay, in Africa we had uh, central banks that had to, uh, to be, that was using Samba 3 and T4. And for security reasons, they had to migrate to Active Directory. And uh, they were uh, in this uh, in those countries. They tried to provide the to, to, to be as an example for, for other companies and to show that free software can be can be used and can save money. So they went to Samba Active Directory, not Microsoft Active Directory. So we have 24 sites, 2,000 users in eight countries and two time zones. 
And uh, the VPN was going to through satellite link, two megabits per two megabit per second, and 8,800 millisecond latency. So, well, the next time you, you, you've got issues with your network, just think about them. <laughs> and um, actually, when I asked them, well, you, could, uh, you, you have money, you could buy better links and uh, fiber optics and stuff like that. And just, they just look at me. And when you've got a, a coup d'etat or whatever, they like, just cut the link. <laughs> the sat link is, is still up. <laughs> so satellite link is important. So they had a great dedicated team and a very skilled one. Uh, one of the best team I've been working with. Because they, um, they even had a, a set, a set link antenna that failed uh, because of a hurricane during the migration. And we finished the migration using texting and, <laughs> and, and some other way of communication. We had another, another site, the diesel generator failed. And they tell me, well, just, just put it next, next week because we, won't, we will never have four hours of electricity, <laughs> continuous electricity. No way. So, and actually, even during that time, we had a coup d'etat in Burkina Faso. And, well, they, they look at who, who did the coup d'etat, and, and they tell me, ah, in eight days, it should be okay. And uh, eight days after, we did the migration. <laughs> very, very great, great people. Special skills. Special skills. <laughs> so we had a, so the migration, actually, it was a, both a migration to Samba AD and a, and a domain merge. Uh, so it was 24 uh, uh, Samba NT4 domains merged into one. And, uh, and just to tell you that Samba works even off on a very uh, strict network. Uh, we had a 802.1x uh, uh, authentication. So it was both for the Kerberos account, uh, machine Kerberos account, and user Kerberos account. And it's a Cisco, the Cisco AnyConnect. So it's uh, not, not free radius or whatever. It was a proprietary software that was plugged into Samba. And uh, all the uh, authentication, 8021X authentication, went properly. And uh, we had very strict ACLs. And, uh, very str and, and VPN uh, topology was uh, only a star topology. And uh, one side could not see the other side, only the main uh, data center. So it was very strict. And and well, Samba worked. <laughs> so after all of this, I just would say, so stop complaining next time you've got a problem <laughs> and think, think about this example. So another project we did uh, recently is the Ministry of Agri Agriculture in France. Uh, it's uh, 3,000 users on eight sites and 3DC with a fiber optics <laughs> between all the sites. It was great. And low latency and everything. So it was just a migration of one domain from NT4 to Samba AD. And uh, it's like Samba is an easy part. We finished the migration at 9 PM. And uh, we went to bed at 5 AM. <laughs> because we had to deal with everything that was around in the network and to double check that everything was working fine. And actually, one thing that we forgot, because it was on maintenance that day, was the, uh, the entrance, uh, the uh, a visitor entrance uh, software. <laughs> and we went, when we came back the next morning, we were locked out. <laughs> and so I had to negotiate with the security guy to let me enter to fix it. <laughs> so I could enter. <laughs> so another more recent example, the Ministry of Culture in France is uh, 8,000 users. So for, for this one, it's uh, only the central administration. So it's uh, only the Paris offices and stuff like that. It's not the regional. So it's, uh, it's only a few sites, it's not so, so, it's not so big. But for the Ministry of Culture, it's a wall, uh, the wall network uh, with all the regional offices. So it's uh, 8,000 users on 170 sites. So both in France and uh, in, the, in uh, the, the, in, uh, the islands. And uh, so we had uh, something like 150 domains, and we did a domain merge going from 150 to 16 domain. Uh, so we had to merge both all the user database. And like I said before, the net, uh, a big part of uh, the work has to be done on the desktop side. So we had uh, used WAPT for the, for the configuration management, so for the profile migration, and join, rejoin the desktop and reconfigure all the network settings. <coughs> and so the next. Uh, the next step of the project is to go to, from 16 domains to one. 
actually is, um, when doing immigration like this, one part of it is also a human part and a political part. So we have uh, sometimes uh, uh, we need to. Uh, it's not only the technology that uh, dictate the the planning. Sometimes it's also the the organizational part. <coughs> so well, sometimes uh, we don't always won, win. <laughs> Like a uh, university in South East of France, uh, it was two, two years ago, and uh, they had three domains to merge, two Samba and T4, and one MSAD. It was, uh, it was a domain merging for, and so 100k desktop and 80,000 users. There was a ballot between Samba 4 and MSAD, and uh, Microsoft made a 90% rebate <laughs> on all their license. <laughs> And um, from our side, uh, we knew that we were reaching mostly uh, the safe limits from uh, at that time. So, well, uh, they went Microsoft, but uh, I hope to get them back next time. <laughs> Another little but a recent one that uh, we are uh, actually it's this, this week. <laughs> uh, a contractor in UK that uh, had a new client. He had Samba 4 ID on his site, but he didn't do any command line on Linux. So he tried to, uh, using the wiki of uh, Samba, he was able to mostly do it right on his Samba ID. But when he decommissioned his, uh, the Samba from his domain, and only the Microsoft one, everything just broke. <laughs> and so he called Microsoft, <laughs> which uh, uh, didn't uh, succeed at doing, at making it back up. So Microsoft gave up. And so they called on the uh, British company that told to call us. And, uh, <laughs> So we used Samba to recreate the domain, just uh, recreating a new domain with the same SID as the old one, piping all the objects inside, all the user object and all the computer object and the groups. And then uh, after that, we, uh, we joined the, um, an, an MSID uh, 2008 and, uh, and decommissioned the Samba and then switched to 2016. And he was happy. But he promised me to get some Samba in Linux training. <laughs> <laughs> So for so it's uh, uh, and I, like I, I was thinking if we can every two years uh, switch them from Linux to Windows and then from Linux to win Windows to Linux and it's a good business too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, things to remember when you do migration. Most of the time, uh, the Samba part is not the hard part. Is uh, the historical stuff is uh, problematic. So be sure to clean up your LDAP to uh, clean up all the, your uh, old users that does not exist for the last five years and that have not been in for the last fi five years. Clean up the computer's account. In most of our migration, we always have something like 30% of extra accounts <laughs> that we shouldn't be there. So identity management is, a <laughs> is, is still a big, uh, a big stuff to... Uh, uh, it's still a big stuff in companies to, be, to make them better. So make, have an inventory that everything connects, that is connecting to your LDAP and, authenti and domain authentication. It's like uh, this, um, <coughs> this uh, when we were at the agriculture and we were locked out because we forgot to, to change that one. But it's, it was not totally our fault because it was changed by another team, the security team, and uh, they didn't inform us. Inventory your desktops. Uh, because when you do migration, you want to be sure that everything migrated properly, so you have to know which desktop is still there and which one is not, and which one is uh, away. <coughs> and the, uh, the migration, uh, whether it is Microsoft to Samba migration or NT4 to AD migration, in any case, uh, migration is the easy part. Uh, it's everything that is around that is hard, so you just check everything, and uh, you need a good configuration management tool for your desktops. So SCCM for Microsoft or WAPT or Landesk or whatever, there are many at, at your uh, possible, but it's uh, one a very important part of it. And one thing, one last thing I wanted to, uh, to point out is uh, like uh, a few days ago, there was uh, Andrew Bat, no, last week, Andrew Bat had, uh, gave a talk in Australia speaking about uh, evolution of Samba and speaking about uh, French government and stuff like that. <laughs> and so there was uh, many comments in, uh, and uh, saying, oh, well, Samba is uh, SMB is uh, old technology, it's dead and whatever, whatever. Uh, well, I wanted to say that Samba team is, uh, is kicking and li alive and kicking, and uh, there are very many, very great developers and uh, working hard. Ourselves, we are not, 
Samba developers, they are integrators. And uh, Samba needs dollars, no, not pizza. It's written on the website. <laughs> and, uh, and so currently, we have, uh, in the last, uh, last two years, we have been able to work with uh, the French government, mainly, mainly French government, for financing and uh, some parts of Samba, which allow them to, uh, to, uh, to better manage the priorities and the schedule for new, for new functionalities that are required for the deployment. <coughs> So French public administration have been uh, heavily involved in the Active Directory part, not the, not the uh, SMB file server part, but in the Active Directory part. And um, one very good thing is that uh, recently the French uh, ANSI, it's a cyber, um, cyber security agency of the French government, has been uh, looking more in a more detailed way into Samba because, uh, because in part because of us, because we put Samba everywhere. <laughs> so they want to have a better control on that. And so uh, they started to look into it. So I think I, I went too fast, but uh, time for questions. We, we have 15 minutes for questions. Yeah. So a big thanks to Samba team for all the great work they are doing. And uh, so there were, our website with our wiki is uh, dev.tranquil.it. <laughs> And uh, we have a company twi a Twitter account, but uh, for, for personal, we have uh, only our good old mail. <laughs> and uh, for your computer management, don't forget to take a look at WAPT. I think it's, uh, it's also very useful for migration, Samba migration. Uh, thanks a lot for, for your patience. And <laughs> Questions asked, please repeat them. Okay. Hmm. okay. Um, on the migration project, you walk to every desktop uh, personally, or hmm. do you remote? Uh, yeah, that's, what, uh, that's, why, that's why I was talking about uh, good configuration management software. It's, uh, when we do the migration, most of the time we do it uh, in the evening, uh, at week time, during week time, not, not on uh, the weekend, because actually it's, uh, most, uh, everything mostly works with, if you do it right. And uh, it's, you need users to see the, the details. So it's no use to do it on Saturday evening, because if there is nobody, just the IT guys to be there in, on Sundays. And, uh, and uh, so, I sorry, just, so the question, <laughs> Was uh, when you do immigration, do you have to go to every desktops and uh, to switch uh, to switch the configuration, local configuration? So no, I, I, like I I was talking about configuration management, and uh, that's why I was insisting on that part. It's because it's, it's what would take the most of the time it, if it is not done right. More questions? Do you have uh, any experience with integrating uh, trust relationships with Microsoft? So I think we have uh, we have Volker there that could speak a bit more about um, uh, trust relationships. It's, uh, we have not uh, most of the time when we have this problem, we do merge, so we don't have to deal with uh, trust relationships. Uh, it's getting better, and I think. Uh, and the, so I think I didn't repeat the question either. Yeah. <laughs> so the question was about uh, trust relationships if we're, we're using it in production and our, on, in our, our, at our clients. So currently we are not using it. It's getting, because it has been, uh, it was, it's getting better. I don't know what the status, uh, Volker. Uh, address? It should work pretty good with 4.7. So trust between Samba AD or Microsoft AD. Okay. So Andras uh, tell me that it works. It should work properly with 4.7. Part that has uh, worked for a long time is Samba being the trusted mm. environment. What we uh, what we are working on is uh, Samba being the, the client, the trusting one. Mm. And so um, it's, it has some support for Cobras that has worked for a while. Uh, what we are still working on, and Meta told me that it will be customer ready with some guidance mm. Okay, so, so the trust relationship is uh, already m working mainly in 4.7 and in 4.8 it should be customer ready. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if it does, is a microphone far? It, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> yes, but you, we, 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 we,
you cover it. Mm. So you, you mostly talked about uh, NT4 to uh, 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 Zamba AD migration. What about um, Microsoft AD to Zamba AD migration? Do these pro projects uh, come often nowadays? Uh, it's, uh, so the question is, <laughs> the question is uh, ma mainly we are doing uh, Samba NT4 to uh, Samba AD migration. And uh, is it uh, Microsoft AD to Samba AD? Is it uh, starting to get uh, uh, more, more often? Well, uh, in, the, in, the f in the beginning of uh, Samba 4, it was uh, actually almost none. Uh, a few years, but uh, no, no more. But now we get more, much more interest into uh, Samba 4 AD because it getting, uh, uh, it's much more mature. And uh, another thing that everybody that is as is uh, Active Directory eight, uh, 2008 R2, uh, they are still, uh, most of the Active Directory, Active Directory domain, I think, are still on uh, a 2000 R2, 2008 R2. And, uh, and the support is going, uh, is going to, uh, to uh, to stop uh, pretty shortly, so they have, uh, here they have uh, a real case uh, of cho choosing between uh, migrating uh, to uh, 2016 and buying also li the licenses and all the client access licenses. Most of the time, it's not the problem with the server license; it's a client access license that uh, <laughs> that costs a lot. And so, uh, no, nope, many people are looking at uh, Samba more and more. People are looking at Samba. So, so they are looking at, but you, you don't have uh, concrete projects right now. Yeah, we did we did a few one. A few one. But uh, it's more it's more with smaller uh, like uh, small small business like 100 or 200 users. Okay. Uh, we didn't have a very large uh, network. Uh, it's perhaps I hope soon. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> yes. What's your favorite Linux distribution to work with? <laughs> so, what's my favorite Linux distribution? So, at, uh, for me at the office, I'm on Debian, okay. but for most of the larger clients, are on <laughs> Red Hat or CentOS. So, hmm. uh, but uh, 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 Red Hat uh, uh, has no uh, active directory package right now. Yeah. So, the, the uh, yeah. So the question is, uh, yeah, Red Hat currently does not have a uh, Samba AD uh, compiled on uh, Red Hat. So one of the issues, and uh, there are so a few Red Hat people here may, uh, may correct me if I'm wrong, but it's uh, MIT Kerberos is a central part of uh, Red Hat, and as long as Samba is not fully, fully, uh, uh, fully worked with M MIT Kerberos, it cannot be included in uh, CentOS or Red Hat natively. But it's in Fedora already, and uh, it's getting. Um, in in in, no, in in CentOS. So what what we are do what what we are doing currently with uh, uh, Samba AD on uh, CentOS is we are recompiling with Heimdall. So it's uh, not a standard uh, micro uh, Red Hat approved <laughs> way of doing things, but it's uh, the mostly uh, tested way. So your system uh, uh, only does uh, Active Directory domain controller. That, uh, you, you you don't run uh, other services. Uh, on the same, uh, on the same yeah. machine. You deploy a machine that only does the yeah. domain controller. So the question is, uh, we, if we deploy a machine that does only, only domain controller, it's like, yeah, when you are going to larger uh, clients, they, they get very picky on security. And so whether be it uh, Microsoft or uh, Samba, Active Directory has, uh, is the most essential part of uh, the security. If uh, the Active Directory is, uh, is pawned, then uh, your whole network is uh, is at risk. So you try to put as few stuff on Active Directory as you can because each of the uh, extra stuff is an extra attack uh, path. Thank you. Hmm? Regarding Red Hat, uh, Red Hat has a product uh, called IBM, IBM Management. Hmm. Um, do you foresee any integrations with that? Uh, do they uh, comply one to each other? Or how do you see that actually? So you are talking about free IPA? I think, yeah, it's and uh, yeah. So uh, one, so I think uh, Alexander would be better, better, could better answer the question here. For, for for us, we have been using Samba since the beginning, and we are mostly happy with it. And I think uh, FreeIPA is more dedicated to Linux, uh, Red Hat, uh, Red Hat Linux, uh, desktops. And uh, but uh, after for for the difference, I, th I think perhaps uh, Alexander would be better. Yes, so, so that. <laughs> because, uh, <coughs> hmm? 
So from um, I'm working actually on free IPA uh, at Red Hat, and I am working on Samba as well. Um, and uh, my colleague and Andres uh, will do the next talk exactly about what we are doing with uh, Samba AD in Fedora. But uh, we spend a lot of time together with um, our partners uh, doing the upstream Samba development, making them free APA and Samba to interoperate. So there's um, support for a trust between Samba AD and uh, free APA already implemented by the um, guys from CERNET, um, mostly METSE and, and some others. And uh, it's still not working for MIT Kerberos. We have like a single thing to fix there, some hashing issue. Um, but uh, that's the only thing limiting. And that that's it. But I'm I'm not going to overtake this session for IPA. <laughs> No, that's not, yeah. Uh, so we have five minutes. Uh, yeah? Oh, yeah. So, um, I, I don't know whether people know, but uh, Chromebooks now should come yeah. back. Yes, we haven't finished yet, sorry. Please close the door. <laughs> So, so Jeremy here. Because uh, uh, Google Chromebooks now have Active Directory support. Uh, I wonder, have you tested it in any of your Samba 4 deployments? Has anyone ever tried running Chromebooks? So, I mean, it should work. Yeah. <laughs> so, I uh, actually, uh, like I think, uh, when we are talking about the De Gaulle syndrome, I think it's about the same with Chromebooks <laughs> currently in France. It's picking up uh, slowly, but yeah. much much slower than, the, than in the US. Have you, have you tried it? I've, uh, I've, I've, I've looked at the documentation and all that, but uh, not, uh, we, didn't have, we don't have Chromebook in, uh, in house. So, uh, but it should be, uh, actually, we didn't have any clients asking for it yet. Okay. So that, that's, the, that's the reason. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it should work. Hmm. It, there should be no difference between Microsoft AD hmm. or so in, uh, and for so to just to uh, to to underline the level of compatibility of Samba 4 is that Cisco AnyConnect, which uh, which integrates quite heavily with the Kerberos uh, part of uh, Active Directory, it just it, it worked with uh, uh, for authentication for for network authentication of Kerberos account and machine Kerberos account and user Kerberos account on the switches Cisco switches. So the, the level of compatibility of Samba is uh, really uh, already very high. That was three years ago. And that was three years ago. So now it's much, much better. <laughs> so? um, with the sites I've got running Samba AD, my big problem is getting the information in and out of AD. And I tend to have to look at my clients and say, the tools on Windows are better for dealing with this. Are there any tools you can recommend on Linux? But getting information in and out of, of ID. So when uh, you want, so the question is was what tools uh, we can use for getting information in and out of AD. So since uh, Samba 4 is uh, replicating the different protocols of uh, Microsoft AD, so all the current tools like RSAT, uh, user and console, uh, GP, GPO console and uh, DNS console, all that work out of the box. After, if you, you are using PowerShell, there are some PowerShell modules using HTTPS, which HTTP uh, connection, which was, won't work. But uh, after, you have got uh, LDAP, and on, uh, directly on Linux, you could have uh, LDB search. And uh, Py if, you, if you know a bit of Python, it's, uh, Samba is just much better. Hmm? I want to give you the Mac. I just want to point you at the Samba tool. So we have Samba tool blank user, Samba tool, blank group, and a colleague of mine has just been expanding on this. For example, move users somewhere else and, and all that stuff. And that's pure Python, uh, directly accessing the local databases. And so if you are, if you are not afraid of having a few lines of scripts, uh, actually Samba AD is much, more, much easier to manage than uh, Microsoft AD. With this, 
we uh, all the time. Thank you very much.